Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am delighted to be with you for the second year in a row, and especially this year for the Bank's Jubilee. So, how is this 50-year-old institution doing? This is precisely what we are about to discuss. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, with a round of applause, Mr. Charles Boama, Vice President Finance, and Mr. Pierre van Pettegem, Treasurer of the African Development Bank Group. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please take a seat. Before we start, for those of you who need a translation, I should recommend you keep your headphones on, as we are going to juggle constantly with French and English, which, as you know, are the two official languages of the bank. Let's start with you, Charles. The global recovery has been facing strong headwinds and has proved slower than expected. In that context, how did Africa's economy perform in 2013? You know, Anne, um, Africa, despite the global slowdown, has performed uh, well. In fact, has proved to be quite resilient. Uh, Africa as a whole grew by 4% in 2013, continuing a recent trend. And what are the engines of that growth? Well, first, the, the, it, its investments have been actually uh, growing uh, in Africa. But before that, let me just say that uh, the growth in Africa is, is really a broad-based uh, story. Uh, there have been regional differences, of course. And uh, if you take, uh, uh, and this trend is actually expected to continue. Now, you should take Sub-Saharan Africa just by itself, because I want to, I think it's important to talk about this because, before we get to the engines, if sure. you don't mind, yeah. Sub-Saharan as a whole grew by uh, basically 5% in 2013. Now, if you exclude South Africa, the growth rate was 6%. And what would you say the necessary conditions are for securing and boosting sustainably that growth in yeah. the near future? Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that question, but again, uh, if, again, if you don't mind, I would like to talk about some of the drivers of, of growth in Africa. Um, and its, it's investments uh, have actually increased, the foreign direct investments have increased by, tripled over the past decade. That has been a, a big driver of growth. Uh, add to that the increase in consumer demand uh, in Africa, uh, which clearly has uh, an, a special urban demand and uh, there has been a significant growth in that regard. Trade also has been a big, a big factor uh, in terms of the uh, driver of growth in Africa. And there have been some enablers which I think would be remiss if we didn't talk about them. Okay. One is improved infrastructure uh, in Africa, uh, which uh, you may already know that uh, basically um, almost 50% of the, of the increase uh, uh, in, in GDP was attributable to improvements in infrastructure. Uh, of course, uh, there also has been strong institutions uh, in, in Africa. Uh, better, uh, uh, essentially, uh, all of these create conditions for, for better growth uh, in, in Africa. The management of our natural resources also creates sustainability uh, of this growth. Now, I'd like to turn to the conditions, uh, just get, getting back to your question. I wasn't ducking your question. The conditions, uh, again, I think we we'll start with uh, just sound microeconomic uh, management uh, in Africa. And uh, indeed, African policymakers I think, deserve uh, considerable credit for, for example, uh, keeping inflationary pressures uh, under control and actually at uh, low, um, probably the lowest point in, in recent memory. So all of these, of course, have been some of the conditions, of course, you add to that the strong institutions, and th those are things that have essentially managed, helped the growth to, uh, to continue. And is Africa's growth enough um, to lift the continent out of poverty? You know, it's, it's a good story, uh, but it's certainly not enough. Um, and, and I'll just touch on one aspect of it. Uh, the, 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 the growth rates need to be increased, and we talked about infrastructure as one of the ways to also help that. Uh, but very importantly is the quality of growth. Uh, that is also critically important. Uh, and here the growth needs to be the type of growth that creates more employment 
And by that, uh, that also creates uh, greater inclusion, so a more inclusive growth. And we're talking here about inclusiveness in all of its, or inclusion in all of its dimensions, spatial, social, geographic, gender. I mean, these are all very critical factors. Uh, and for this to happen, African economies uh, and countries actually need to get more structural transformation that would enable greater value addition. Pierre, je me tourne vers vous. Euh, la transformation structurelle de l'Afrique et son développement durable visent à assurer au continent une place plus grande dans la production mondiale de valeur ajoutée. Comment est-ce que la banque aide l'Afrique à atteindre cet objectif eh bien, la, la stratégie de notre institution va exactement dans ce sens. Aujourd'hui, 70% des exportations du continent proviennent des industries extractives. Pour augmenter la valeur ajoutée et produite, il faut mettre en place une véritable politique d'industrialisation. Les opérations de la banque visent à optimiser les avantages comparatifs de nos pays et aussi leurs liens avec l'économie mondiale. Comment En finançant de grands projets d'infrastructures qui diminuent fortement le coût de faire des affaires et favorisent l'intégration Régional. Quant à nos opérations dans le secteur privé, le financement du commerce et les opérations de cofinancement avec d'autres institutions ont cette dimension à l'esprit lorsqu'elles sont conçues. Et justement, quelle est la place du secteur privé dans la stratégie de la banque Alors, Ces opérations se sont fortement accrues au cours des dernières années. Et pourquoi pas 70% de la production 70% de l'investissement, 90% des emplois créés proviennent des activités du secteur privé. L'année dernière, en 2013, les opérations de la banque dans ce secteur, il y en a eu 37 et se sont montées à 1,6 milliard de dollars. Et si l'on se réfère à la période 2011-2013, on parle de 1 milliard de recettes additionnelles, de recettes publiques additionnelles qui ont été générées, 480 000 emplois qui ont été créés, et finalement, 4,5 millions de projets d'investissement qui ont bénéficié à des personnes par l'intermédiaire de la microfinance. Quelles autres solutions, s'il en est, avance la banque pour financer la transformation de l'Afrique Alors l'infrastructure reste un facteur primordial. Saviez-vous, Anne, qu'aujourd'hui, seulement 20% des routes en Afrique sont goudronnées Que seulement 43% des Africains ont accès à l'électricité Alors qu'au niveau mondial, en moyenne, on parle d'environ de 82%. La banque africaine reste le premier bailleur externe sur le continent pour les investissements dans les projets d'infrastructure, avec un montant cumulé de 21 milliards de dollars environ. Alors, qui dit secteur d'infrastructure parle évidemment des transports, de l'énergie. Et si l'on prend l'année dernière, nous avons approuvé 3,2 milliards de dollars dans ce secteur. Qu'est-ce que c'est exactement Eh bien, des routes au Sénégal, par exemple, des autoroutes au Kenya, des chemins de fer en Tunisie, en Ouganda, encore au Kenya. La banque a participé aussi au financement du terminal de conteneurs de Walwis B en Namibie, qui est un, vraiment un très bon, un très bon exemple de d'intégration régionale. De fait, pour les pays voisins, la République du Congo, la Zambie, le Zimbabwe, le Botswana, l'Afrique du Sud, ce projet constitue une véritable passerelle vers les marchés mondiaux. De plus, notre financement a permis de tripler la capacité de ce terminal et aussi la création de 900 emplois locaux. You know, Uh, let me just jump in here. Despite the, all the investments in infrastructure Pierre just talked about, the infrastructure deficit uh, remains massive. And uh, in fact, just to, we all know the numbers, but just to put it in perspective, um, all of Africa combined 
generate about the same amount of energy that Germany alone does. Another statistic I saw recently uh, talking about Sub-Saharan Africa, excluding South Africa, uh, generates 60%, only 60% of the power available to New York City alone, not the state, New York City alone. Now, this clearly is a call to action. And this is why, or one of the reasons, why the bank, for example, financed the feasibility studies for the Inga project, which we believe is going to be a game changer. A game changer indeed. And this is what I'm hearing of Africa 50. Um, can you tell us more about it, Charles? Yes, uh, Africa 50 starts from the, the basic premise, and I think we all accept that, is that the deficit is not only huge, but the, the, the need to bridge that deficit is urgent. It just needs to be done very quickly. And, and, and therefore, it is essentially an African initiative that is designed to essentially crowd in more resources to bridge the massive infrastructure deficit in, in Africa. Now, it is being spearheaded by the African Development Bank, but working very closely with the African Union, uh, with the uh, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, with the NEPED agency, and with uh, many regional communities. So this is actually a broad-based um, um, uh, exercise, which is intended to essentially help accelerate infrastructure delivery uh, in Africa. Now, just to share with you some numbers, um, currently, the, the target equity or the target equity for Africa 50 is $10 billion, which is expected to help generate about $100 billion worth of infrastructure projects uh, in Africa. Now, the intermediate uh, target is $3 billion, uh, and some of you might say, well, we've heard about this for the last uh, two years. We'll have some good news for you. Um, just uh, barely two weeks ago, the Board of Directors of the African Development Bank actually approved to invest up to $500 million in the equity of Africa 50, and on top of that, contributes uh, significantly uh, to the project development activities of uh, Africa 50. So it's a massive uh, step forward and it's a game changer, we believe. Very good news. Yeah. Pierre, l'Afrique est un continent jeune. 122 millions de jeunes vont entrer dans la vie active dans la décennie à venir. Ces jeunes, il va falloir les accompagner jusqu'au marché du travail. Est-ce que la banque intervient dans ce domaine Et si oui, comment Alors bien sûr, la banque intervient dans ce domaine. Et nous faisons la, la promotion d'un nouveau modèle d'éducation pour l'Afrique, qui est basé d'ailleurs sur les nouvelles technologies de l'information. Et il vise à doter les jeunes en compétences, en sciences, en technologie, et aussi à stimuler leur esprit critique pour qu'ils soient équipés des compétences qu'aujourd'hui le marché du travail requiert. Alors, notre stratégie est ciblée sous les groupes les plus vulnérables, les femmes et les jeunes des milieux les plus défavorisés. L'année dernière, la banque a approuvé 524 millions de dollars dans le domaine du développement social et humain. Il y avait dans ces opérations d'ailleurs une opération au Rwanda, dans le développement des compétences, de l'employabilité et de l'entrepreneuriat. So Charles, Pierre's just mentioned mm -hmm. the gender issue. Right, right. I heard it. Mm -hmm. um, women represent 50% of Africa's population. What is the bank's strategy to promote gender equality? Well, first, Anne, let me, let me say that uh, we've just been talking about the growth story for Africa. Now, this growth story is incomplete and will remain incomplete until and unless we tap the economic potential, the tremendous economic potential Rep, uh, provided by, the, or that can be provided by 50% of our population women. So that is there. Now, uh, in recognition of this, uh, the bank has a gender strategy that is really has uh, three pillars. One is just working towards the legal status and property rights of women. And then the second pillar is uh, basically economic empowerment. Now that includes uh, access to credit, you know, uh, helping women farmers uh, be more productive, 
uh, basically, it also includes uh, advocacy for women-owned businesses. These are some of the elements of that second pillar. And then the third pillar is basically capacity building activities uh, for gender equality. Very important. Well, of course, everything we've talked about so far mm -hmm. is based, is built on the solid financial foundation of the bank. Mm -hmm. What drives the strong rating enjoyed by your institution? Yes, indeed, uh, the bank, African Development Bank, has enjoyed uh, AAA ratings from all the major rating agencies. And these are really built on two main things. Uh, one is the intrinsic financial strength of the bank. And of course, uh, very importantly, the shareholder support uh, that the bank enjoys. Now, on intrinsic financial strength, uh, what, what drives that? What are the, so, and we just name a few. First, the bank has and always maintains a very strong liquidity. You add to that uh, the strong capitalization of the bank. And then, of course, uh, the bank has um, just very good prudential policies in place to assure the good functioning of the system and the confidence of the people we deal with. And the bank enjoys preferred credit status uh, from its borrowing member countries. Now, these are the pillars, of course, of the, of the um, intrinsic financial strength of the bank. Now, you add on top of that the strong support that we enjoy from our member countries, and there you have it, a AAA institution. Yeah. Well, precisely, how does the strong support from your shareholder uh, reflect? Uh, in many ways, but in the interest of time, I'll just uh, name a few. But before I do that, let me at this point uh, actually acknowledge, and I think uh, we share with uh, the audience, uh, the adhesion to the bank group of Turkey and Luxembourg as the 78th and the 79th uh, member countries, respectively. So the, you see the, the base is growing. Now, the, turning to your question, uh, the, that support, it's reflected in the successive capital increases uh, of the bank. Now, just looking at the last one, which was the sixth capital increase we call GCI 6. GCI 6 essentially helped to triple the capital base of the bank to $100 billion. Now, this, of course, provides considerable capacity for the bank to do more, for the bank to essentially extend its uh, development activities uh, on the continent. Yes, but... Uh it means also more ri risk. And Charles, you operate in one of the most challenging regions of the world. So how do you manage the credit risk stemming from your main development activities? OK. The risks, and, and, and to understand that, uh, would also need to talk about the, the foundations uh, of, of the bank uh, in terms of the, the, the the equity of the bank, which is made up of that paid-in capital, and of course the reserves of the bank, and we, I talked about that earlier. Um, and, and as you can see, the, the, that has been increasing over time. Now, the portfolio of the bank is the, the major exposure comes from what we call the sovereign guaranteed exposures, which are basically the uh, loans to you know, member countries that are guaranteed to member countries but also increasing significantly uh, over time. And that one represents almost, uh, almost $14 billion at the end of 2013. Now you add to that an increasing non-sovereign guaranteed private sector exposures, uh, which was about $4.6 billion at the end of 2013. Now how do we ensure that us, and this represents essentially about a 50% increase between 2009 and 2013, in the portfolio of the bank. So there's been a tremendous growth uh, over this period of time. How do we ensure that growth? The bank has in place a very sophisticated risk management uh, system that ensures that the risks that we are taking are calibrated with our risk-bearing capacity. And that is reflected in a number of ways. One, you will see that our weighted average risk rating for the entire portfolio has been fairly steady and it was at around 3%, which is at the lower end of the desired range uh, of, of that. Another way to look at this is what we call the risk capital utilization of the bank, which essentially shows the rate at which we are using our capital. Now, the risk capital utilization of the bank was uh, 62% at the end of 2013, which means fundamentally that the bank has substantial headroom to essentially do more, to essentially uh, take on 
uh, risks uh, in, in its development activities. Pierre, Charles a mentionné un peu plus tôt euh, qu'un des piliers euh, de votre notation était un niveau de liquidité confortable. Qu'entendez-vous par là Alors en fait, à tout moment, l'institution doit pouvoir disposer d'un matelas de liquidité qui lui permet, pendant une année complète, sans avoir accès au refinancement sur les marchés de capitaux, qui lui permet donc de couvrir ses besoins en dette, en fait le service de la dette, ses décaissements et aussi ses besoins de trésorerie. Alors cette liquidité est évidemment investie sur des, sur des placements sûrs. Euh, à la fin de l'année dernière, il y en avait environ pour 10,5 milliards de dollars et 95% de cette liquidité était placée sur des supports notés 2A ou mieux, 2A ou 3A. Alors cette sûreté, en fait, n'est pas incompatible avec une génération de bon rendement, production de bon rendement. D'ailleurs, l'année dernière, nos gestionnaires de portefeuille ont, si vous me permettez, encore une fois, fait mieux que leurs indices de référence. So, Charles, you mentioned earlier the bank's financial soundness. Mm -hmm. How did the bank perform last year? Uh, despite the, the challenging environment we just talked about uh, a few moments ago, uh, the bank is in, in, in a sound financial uh, position. Uh, the bank did well. Uh, indeed, uh, well, as you may know, profit maximization is not the primary objective of the bank. However, the bank since its inception has generated earnings uh, to be able to add to its risk capital, its ability to to essentially do more, to do more development activities uh, on the continent. Now let's take um, 2013 for, as an example. Uh, the bank, uh, from its made enough earnings to strengthen its reserves in the first place, and then also essentially help the African Development Fund in terms of being able to do more concessional uh, uh, lending on the continent, also support the Africa 50 initiative that we just talked about a moment ago. And in fact, uh, the bank also does support, um, it's a special relief fund, it's a, a fund for emergency relief and, and so forth uh, on the continent. Uh, so for example, in 2013 from this fund, the bank was able to provide to Guinea-Bissau some support against the cholera epidemic. So these are all the different uh, things that the bank does uh, from its strong financial base. I see. Si je peux revenir un instant sur le thème du Fonds africain de développement, cette année va marquer son, son 40e anniversaire. Mm -hmm. Et il est doté de ressources cumulées d'environ 50 milliards de dollars, qui représente bien sûr un, un très fort soutien à la transformation du continent. L'année dernière, on a terminé sa 13e reconstitution et on a récolté à ce moment-là 7 milliards de dollars. Et c'est peut-être le moment de remercier tous les pays donateurs pour leur contribution au Fonds africain de développement dans un environnement qui, on peut le dire, est très difficile, un environnement d'austérité. Alors du bon côté aussi, l'année dernière, nous avons souhaité la bienvenue à deux nouveaux pays contributeurs africains. On parle de l'Angola et de la Libye, qui s'ajoutent aux pays contributeurs africains existants, l'Afrique du Sud et l'Égypte. Let, let, me, let me say that uh, this complementary relationship between the fund and the bank uh, really helps the bank to do more. And the bank also, of course, listens to its, its, its clients, its customers. And as a result, is continually developing new products, new instruments uh, to, to leverage the resource of the bank to do more. Uh, let's take some examples. There is uh, what we call the, the partial risk guarantee product that has been introduced by the bank that essentially uh, provides guarantees uh, for, uh, for essentially um, uh, against, against default of governments to commercial lenders. Uh, we also have the partial credit uh, guarantee product that again uh, provides a guarantee and provides enhancements. Uh, there is a very new one called the, uh, the, 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 the private sector facility. 
Now, what that is, is a, 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 an instrument that is a new vehicle, really, that is funded by the African Development Fund, $256 million, that we believe would help essentially catalyze about $5.1 billion of project. This is a, a credit enhancement product that will help the bank to do more. Finally, uh, I'd like to share of course, with you that uh, we do have uh, a, new, a new change in, uh, in our product offering, and basically that is what we call the fully flexible loan. And that provides to our member countries, our borrowers, the ability to change their you know, interest rates, uh, uh, the, the terms, etc. And this, essentially, we think will be a useful tool in the debt management uh, process. Comme on peut le voir, yeah. euh, la valeur intrinsèque de l'institution continue à, à augmenter, euh, notamment par euh, l'augmentation constante mm -hmm. des ressources du Fonds africain de développement et aussi par euh, l'apparition d'instruments novateurs que Charles vient de détailler. Et ces instruments permettent d'accroître l'impact de notre activité près. Alors, euh, des nouvelles voies de financement et de partenariat sont aujourd'hui euh, aussi activement recherchés. Parlons justement de ces partenariats. Mm -hmm. um, Charles, yeah. what are those new avenues for financing partnership? Uh, you know, the bank has, in addition to the many trust funds uh, that the bank uh, manages, the bank continues to look, look for ways to strengthen and deepen its partnerships with other uh, development actors. Uh, let me just uh, take two examples. Um, the bank has had uh, with Japan um, a program that initially started with one billion recently. The second phase of the program is for two billion. And what that, that what is, is has three components. One is basically credit lines to the bank on very attractive terms for unlending. Uh, the second is co-financing of projects uh, with the bank. And the third is some money for technical assistance, capacity building for the private sector in Africa. That's just one example. Uh, a more recent example, and one that we uh, believe will be concluded by the end of this week, is uh, a cooperation agreement uh, with China, with the People's Bank of China, uh, that the, the bank uh, will, uh, will have access to $2 billion worth of money that the bank will use in exactly the same way that the bank uses its own money. In other words, uh, this will finance projects in all the sectors that the bank uh, determines uh, for sovereign as well as non-sovereign uh, guaranteed uh, uh, loans and projects, and on exact, using exactly the same policies and, and safeguards that the bank uses. Now, these are just two examples that I wanted to share with you. Still, um, the bank uh, is a frequent visitor of the capital markets. What can you tell us about these funding activities? La banque s'appuie sur euh, sa notation 3A pour euh, euh, obtenir sur les marchés de capitaux des ressources à des coûts extrêmement attractifs. Alors, le, la taille du programme d'emprunt est évidemment en ligne avec les opérations de prêt de l'institution. Cette année, on parle d'environ 4,7 milliards de dollars. Au jour d'aujourd'hui, on a environ levé 60% de ces ressources. On peut comparer à l'année dernière, où nous avions levé 5,6 milliards de dollars. Et aujourd'hui, dans les marchés, circulent environ 22 milliards de dollars d'obligations de la Banque africaine de développement. Alors, nos émissions de référence, c'est-à-dire celles qui ont un montant minimum d'un milliard de dollars. Elles suscitent l'intérêt des investisseurs institutionnels un peu partout dans le monde. On parle des banques centrales, on parle de fonds de pension, on parle de compagnies d'assurance-vie, on parle même de banques commerciales. Dans tout le monde, ça veut dire quoi ben, Ça veut dire des Amériques à l'extrême-orient en passant par l'Afrique. Let, let me jump in here. In fact, um, just speaking of the first, I think this is an opportunity to thank all of our investors, uh, uh, the central banks uh, Pierre talked about from across the, across the world, institutional investors uh, that are buying ADB bonds. 
In particular, uh, I'd like to uh, just express the, 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 our appreciation to the, and, and, and for the increasing number of African central banks that are buying ADB bonds. Now, we think that's wonderful. At the last count, there were nine that are buying ADB bonds. Now, I trust that by this time next year, we will be telling you that all African central banks are buying ADB bonds. And by doing so, we assure you, you will not only be, you will actually be enjoying this wonderful combination of safety, a yield pickup over US treasuries, and at the same time, contributing to Africa's development. We think that's a win-win uh, situation. Yeah. A bon entendeur. Pierre, j'ai été interpellé par votre programme de Green Bonds, qu'on pourrait traduire par euh, obligation de croissance verte. Absolument. Euh, de quoi s'agit-il exactement Alors en fait, c'est en ligne avec euh, l'objectif de la banque de, de favoriser euh, de façon progressive la croissance durable du continent. Alors pour ce faire, nous avons établi un, un, un programme d'obligation verte qui d'ailleurs suscite un vif intérêt auprès des investisseurs dits euh, socialement responsables. Euh, ce sont ces investisseurs qui, dans le cadre de ce programme, euh, souhaitent euh, faire euh, ou contribuer aux solutions au changement climatique. Alors, notre premier emprunt vert a été lancé l'année dernière. Ce fut un emprunt de référence d'un montant de 500 millions de dollars. Et je crois qu'il est juste de dire qu'il a rencontré un succès absolument foudroyant. Il fut d'ailleurs rapidement suivi de deux obligations vertes libellées en couronne suédoise. Une première pour la banque. Alors, les fonds levés euh, financent, entre autres, l'alimentation en eau, la préservation de la biosphère et aussi, bien sûr, les énergies renouvelables. Ce programme témoigne de l'engagement de notre institution dans le développement durable du continent et aussi de son leadership dans la recherche de solutions au changement climatique pour l'Afrique. Indeed, uh, as, as we all know, Africa is the lowest uh, emitter of uh, greenhouse gases and perhaps the, the, the continent that bears the greatest impact of climate change. Uh, it is actually worth noting that, uh, well, first, Africa possesses about over 50% of the re renewable energy mm -hmm. uh, potential of the world. But even if all of this is fully developed, it will still not be enough to meet the energy needs of Africa. Well, I think that's a point that is worth, worth noting. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. it's noted. Yeah. So, toujours au chapitre uh, du financement de la banque, uh, Pierre, mais plus précisément en Afrique, comment la banque intervient-elle sur les marchés de capitaux africains? Eh bien, uh, comme vous le savez, Anne, la majeure partie de notre financement se fait à, à l'extérieur du continent. Mais il est évident que nous sommes très fiers de notre mandat, qui est aussi de développer les marchés de capitaux africains. Alors, notre approche à cet égard est multidimensionnelle. Nous appuyons les stratégies d'intégration financière régionale, d'harmonisation de la gouvernance et des normes financières. Et aussi, nous appuyons la, la mise en place de mécanismes de paiement régionaux. Sur un autre thème, la banque est le principal sponsor du site euh, IMFA, l'Initiative pour les marchés financiers africains. Ce site produit d'ailleurs depuis euh, mai 2013, il y a juste un an, des données extrêmement fiables sur les marchés de la dette africaine, ou je devrais dire des dettes africaines. La banque est aussi un émetteur régulier en devises africaines, des émissions libellées en devises africaines. On peut compter en cumulé que la banque a aujourd'hui émis environ 4 milliards de ses obligations et une partie de cette collecte est d'ailleurs effectuée directement sur les marchés domestiques. And as a conclusion, Charles, what is your take on this 50-year-long journey of the African Development Bank Group? Uh, you, you know, Anne, um, from a modest beginning of less than $400 million and some 10 staff, 
the bank today is a highly rated uh, institution with a capital base of over $100 billion and some 2,000 highly skilled professionals. Now, the, the, over the past few years, the past 50 years, this period has been marked by many milestones, many important achievements of the bank, thanks, of course, to the very dedicated staff of the bank, thanks to very visionary leadership by the presidents of the bank, past and present, and thanks, of course, to a very supportive board, uh, and through them, uh, of course, a very supportive shareholder group that we talked about earlier. As the bank starts its move, as we move to, back to our headquarters in Abidjan, the, one, the only thing I can say is uh, to really uh, assure all of our stakeholders that they will continue to find in the bank the trusted partner that it has been, a financially sound institution that is committed to delivering the results that we all want to ensure that Africa truly rises. That's what I like to say. Great contributions yeah. indeed. We'll hear more about the bank's underground results just before dessert with Simon Mizrahi. Gentlemen, many thanks. Thanks to you. Thank you. For those of you who would like to dig deeper, um, you can find the bank's financial presentation online and you will get printed copies on your way out as well. Thank you for your attention and bon appétit. Merci.